Hi Potters. Now that we've done a lot of things like just wedging and centering and pulling up into a cylinder, let's go ahead and make a bowl. That would be our first big project here. And we'll utilize what we've already learned in the previous techniques and skills. So let's start with centering. And I'll review all the basic concepts in the centering and getting our hand position correct. So elbow locked in, thumb across, put our thumb up, push down into the hockey puck, do this at least three times. Also see how my hand opens up into this little karate chop, that helps to flatten it out a little bit. So you want a nice side there, finish off my centering by removing this excess clay along the side so I don't have a ski slope happening on the side down here. Now I'll open up, lock my two fingers into my thumb, push down in the center, pick that up. push down in the center, take my pin tool, measure, gives me about a quarter of an inch. Now I'll go ahead and open. I'm going to volcano this in because the sides are extending out. Press my inside bottom of the pot with a sponge, pushing down, compress the rim. Okay, <clears throat> now we're going to pull up. I've done this technique before. So fingers at the edge of the sponge, thumbs. Thumb on the outside, two fingers on the inside, if not three fingers. Somewhat flat, not fingertips, but flatter. Push with the sponge as you pick up with the fingers. Push into the, with the sponge. So you move into a cylinder. You can move this cylinder, you can not just necessarily pull it straight up, but for the bowls, you can pull it to the side. You can pull it out a little bit. See the angle? Now what I'm going to do hand on the inside. So now we're going to open into the bowl. I put my left hand inside. As much of my hand that can fit flush with the pot, with the inside fur. So all of this is trying to touch. Outside does the same thing. And I kind of make a sandwich out of it. Got to make sure that you've got plenty of water and it's well lubricated. Then with the inside hand it's going to form the pot the left hand is going to go along as the controller to keep everything in position okay. do some more with it so now I'm going to start pushing from the bottom let me take some of the water out of this and you can see what we're trying to do here We want to get the bottom so that it, it's like a ski slope, nice and smooth. You don't want that transition right there. If you look at a nice bowl, a cereal bowl or a salad bowl, it's nice and smooth along that way. So that's what we're going to try to do now in a couple ways. We're going to start with our hand. So the fingers are going to work along the bottom to shape that. 
and I just move my fingers up and down on it. See it beginning to happen? The transition is moving away and it's smoothing out that way. And I'll bring my hands up a little bit further. I also turn my finger on the outside. Let's see what we look like here. Good. Here's another couple things you can do. I'll show you some tools. This one <clears throat> is a tool by uh, MKM Tools. It's a W2B. That's the that's the size, the model number, W2B. You can get this at your supplier, and they make them in in a couple of different sizes, smaller. And this one I use a lot for vases and bowls. It might be just a little bit big for this, but maybe not. And watch how I use it. So you've got this angle here that can fit very nicely into the bowl here to help reinforce this nice ski sloped angle here. So you put it in, push it a little bit. I use my metal rib on the outside as my controller. I'm going to turn this over. Use this more on the what I'm trying to do is eliminate the transition, get a nice smooth there. Now I use my sponge and just kind of fine-tune it a little bit. There we go. Nice. If I say so myself, I'll compress the rim. Now let's talk about rims. A variety of different sizes and, and shapes on a rim. In this case, in fact, in my the way I do my pottery, I like my pots with thin rims because it gives the sensation, it gives the appearance of the pot uh, to be light and, and thin. It may not be, but at least the thin rim has that appearance. And I achieve this by doing this position. It's like you do a, a rim compression, but you move your finger to the side. So it's going to work off of the opposite of this. And right along the top, maybe even move your finger into a V shape. And there you are. Get this nice clean edge. So with small motor skills here involved. Then, we'll use a chamois now. I'll show you what we do with a chamois. So this is a, this is a chamois. It's not really a chamois. It's what they use for, on cars to dry them off. It's a, I think it's a synthetic material. I'm not really sure. But here's how you use it. If you hold the chamois, the thumb on top, and your second finger underneath, thumb on top, second finger, and hold it near the bottom of the chamois, thumb and second finger, this position is important. Then tent it, put it into a tent, and let your top fingers, your first finger of each hand, be on either side of the top of the tent. This is the controller. And what you do <clears throat> is you lay that part, the very top, not the whole piece, but the top part is on the rim. And the clay just glides through it. You don't push it down, you just let it be there. These two fingers can control either side of that clay because you can do several things with it. I'll show you in a second, but see how nice that's coming out? That rim is nice and smooth and even. So if I wanted to make this rim come out a little bit, have a little flare to it, I'd put this finger down, this finger up, and push the clay over my finger. Now we have a little lip on this. from the bottom. So now we have the interior of the bowl nice and smooth. We have a rim on this. It's nice and thin. We've angled it out. There are a couple other things that we can do with rims that I'll show you in another video. Now let's do the last thing which is trimming the bottom. Now we're going to trim the bottom. A couple ways we can do this, or at least we can create a foot in the bottom is what we want to do. 
It already kind of has one if you look there. See this clay extending out this way? So it has a sense that the pot's coming down and then our foot is extending out, having like a little pedestal down there. You can enhance that pedestal, putting the side of your finger into the clay, taking a trim tool like this, and trimming. You've got to be careful how you use it. You don't want to go flat like this because you're going to undercut the clay. You don't want to go too high because your top part of this trim tool will hit the bowl. So whatever it takes just to trim that like that. So now we have a, a foot on this. <clears throat> you may not like that, so let's take it all off and see what we have. We'll just take the trim tool and slowly come in on it and we'll put it into a V-shape. And I turn it sideways and remove the clay from the bat. So now we've got a nice trim V-shape. Be careful not to overextend this because, in other words, don't overdo it. Don't get carried away with trimming your the base. Just get a nice clean trim because once it's leather hard and we start trimming the bottom and cleaning it all up, we can fine tune what we just do there. I think I'll do a little bit of Take my rib, my metal rib, just go along the outside very gently, I kind of arch it, go along the outside just to clean that up a little bit here. Good. So now we got our bowl here nice. Let's pick this up and see what it looks like if we hold it up. There we go. The bottom's rough, but we'll clean that all up here in a, when we do the trimming on the pot. So now we've made a simple bowl. The same principles that we just used apply whether it's a pound and a half, which this is, or six pounds. So, making a bowl.